Thousands of your taxpayer dollars are going to high speed internet. We're taking a closer look at how Washington spending your money with the CEO and founder of OpenTheBooks.com, Adam Angievsky. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Jan. Congress has allocated $65 billion to an internet for all plan that would bring high speed internet to, to more rural areas. So break down this program. Well, it was $65 billion out of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, but you got to add on $25 billion from the uh, American Rescue Act plan as well. So there's $90 billion to get America connected. And it sounds like a laudable plan, but when you look under the hood, the spending isn't that great. Uh, look, there's 11 uh, programs from four federal agencies. One of those programs is for rural broadband. We gave oversight to that at OpenTheBooks.com, and it's crazy, stupid money being spent. <laughs> That's a lot of money, and the program is divided into grants and loans and loan funding. So let's just start with the grants, because those never have to be paid back. What did your investigation uncover about that? So the rural broadband grants are paid out of the agriculture department, and that actually makes sense. Here's what doesn't make sense. Um, it's not a good return on taxpayers. It never has been a good return for taxpayers on their investment. In 2019, during the Trump administration, the average cost to hook up a household with internet high speed was $5,000. Under the Biden administration, Jan, that has actually escalated. The average cost to hook up a household is now $18,000, oh and that actually makes no sense. No. And also, your auditors found many examples where the cost to connect a family to high-speed broadband internet was at least a million dollars. What? We found four projects where the average cost was over a million dollars per household. Here are some examples. Utah, we found two households were connected for a total taxpayer cost of $2.3 million. In Alaska, they spent $35 million to connect 32 families to the internet. That's an average cost of $1.1 million per family. But Jan, it's not only domestic spending. In Puerto Rico, we found a project for over $8 million that connected six schools and two families. But it's also in foreign countries like the little micro island nation of Palau in the Pacific Ocean. We found $35 million connected three schools and six households for 35 million. Yeah, and you also found the state of Alaska was the biggest beneficiary since the administration changed the rules on grant priorities. So tell us what changed and how this happened. Well, U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski from Alaska, she was the Republican driving the bipartisan infrastructure bill. The Biden administration needed Republicans, so they changed the rules. Rural broadband used to connect farms, but now it's done on a formula of population or Alaska is the number one qualifier. So in Alaska, incredibly, during the Biden administration, they've co they've connected about 7,000 families for a half billion dollars. It's $81,000 per family. That's actually a boondoggle. Why are we spending millions of dollars for one family, two families? Hasn't Congress heard of Starlink? Like, why are, why are we funding this? Exactly, Starlink has a low orbit satellite that you can connect high-speed internet for 150 bucks a month. Why are we laying physical infrastructure in the tough terrain of Alaska that's super expensive? And then you have real problems like this summer for months, Northern Alaska went dark on cell phone service and internet because a fiber optic cable was cut by ice in the Arctic Ocean. Oh my goodness. You should, there, there's no other solution here. It should be low, low orbit satellite. Founder of OpenTheBooks.com, Adam Angievsky. Always a pleasure talking to you. Have a great weekend, sir. Thank you.